nafs the sufi understanding part 3 sheikh junaid al baghdadi said those who have striven against their desires and repented for our sake we shall guide them to the ways of sincerity and one cannot struggle against his enemy outwardly with the sword except he who struggles against these enemies inwardly you have to struggle against all these desires inwardly then whoever is given victory over them will be victorious over his enemies and whosoever is defeated by them his enemy defeats him competition and rivalry are allowed towards excellence in worship in that respect allah established levels between the believers in his book and this is clear from countless hadith as well the reward of jihad is immense as proved by the hadith of the prophet that if he could he would ask allah to bring him back to life so that he would go back and die as a shaheed or martyr many times over and yet with respect to the present issue or those who remember allah including the perfect scholars who are true knowers of allah are superior to others what does hadith say on jihad against ego hazrat umar radhi allah taala anhu narrated an incident once a man came to the prophet seeking permission to go to jihad the prophet asked are your parents alive the person responded in affirmation the prophet replied then struggled to keep their right in this hadith there is evidence that the sunnah for entering the path and undertaking self discipline is to act under the expert guidance so that he may be shown the way that is best for him to follow and the soundest for the particular aspirant for when that companion wished to go out to jihad he did not content himself with his own opinion in the matter but sought advice from one who is more knowledgeable than him and more expert as well the person further inquired if this is the case of the lehar of the lesser jihad then what about the greater jihad holy prophet said in the farewell pilgrimage the mujahid is he who may, who makes jihad against himself jihad nafsa for the sake of obeying allah subhanahu wa taala for this masters have given importance on zikr zikr is most beneficial form of practice a person can perform while is still alive and good even though zikr is translated as invocation or remembrance of allah on each breath this explanation is is still extremely insufficient zikr increases the capacity of brain in the direction of the meaning of the word repeated in mind zikr transfers the wave energy generated by the brain to person's soul or ruh which is the hologram or like a spiritual body of waves thus it provokes the person with a strong soul in afterlife 
music develops brain faculties such as comprehension, understanding, and assimilation of the meanings of the repeated words. Zikr brings certainty or yakin about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Zikr results in realization with the divine meanings. Due to its attributes, some of which we pointed out above, Zikr is mentioned as a highly regarded practice in Quranul Karim and those who do not pay enough attention to Zikr are said to have admonished. And whoever turns himself away from the Zikr of the Rahman, we set a Satan on him when he becomes his associate and most surely they run them away from the true path, but they still think that they are guided all right. In response to a question on Zikr, which deeds are most favored by Allah, the Holy Prophet said, to pass away while your tongue is still moist with the Zikr of Allah, would you like me to inform you of which deed of yours is of highest benefit, which is the purest at the sight of Allah and which will increase your degrees the most and which is more beneficial for you than giving away gold and silver and then encountering your enemies on the battlefields and cutting off their necks and they cut off yours in the name of Allah that is Zikr of Allah the highest. This is mistaken here when we talk about the enemies, the enemy is not outside, it is inside our desires, our passions. When we are on the path, for instance, when we are listening to the holy scriptures, we feel sleepy and we do not have much of interest. When there is a music playing, that makes your step move and makes you dance a kind of techno beat. Then, if the scriptures are used in that intonation, it will have a greater effect. When a person comes to a religious place for zikr or anything, he feels sleepy. When the same person goes to a club, dances on the beat of the music, whole night can he, remain, he can remain dancing but he does not feel sleepy. These words, when they are used in a proper intonation, proper rhythm, they create a vibration on our consciousness and that is what is most important and all the religious preceptors have to focus on that. Jihad is always against the inner enemies but there are certain religious sects who take jihad on outer enemies in the sake in the name of the religion. The ex example of the people who do zikr of Allah and who do not is like people who are alive and dead. Practice zikr of Allah so much so that people should start to question your madness. It is said Satan has his mouth on the hearts of the sons of Adam. When they do zikr of Allah, he moves away. When they stop the zikr due to absence of mind, he swallows their heart.
It is the highest merit of all the things that Allah inspires his servants to do zikr. No charitable deed is more meritorious than practicing zikr of Allah. Whosoever does not practice zikr of Allah very much will get distant from faith. People feel disappointed on the doomsday due to every moment they lived without practicing the zikr. The constant remembrance of that which is on each breath is the zikr. And with that, you are constantly warding off the inner elements. The types of the zikr. Zikrs are two types. Zikr zali, that which is recited aloud, and zikr khafi, which is performed either with a low voice or silently. Naqshbandi order of sheikhs usually perform zikr khafi, whilst the Chishtia and Kadariya path celebrate the zikr zali or zikr zehar. That means they recite the zikr loud. There are various ways of going through the exercise, but the main feature of each are similar in character. For zikr zehar, the worshipper sits in usual sitting posture and shouts the word Allah, drawing his voice from his left side and then from his throat. Sitting at prayers, he repeats the word Allah is still louder than before, first from his right knee and then from his left side. Folding his legs under him, he repeats the word Allah first from his right knee and then from his left side is still louder. He is still remaining in the same position he do. repeats the word Allah first from his left knee and then from his right knee. Then from the left side and lastly in front he is still louder. Sitting as at prayer with his face towards the Mecca, he closes his eyes and says La, drawing the sound as from the navel up to the left shoulder, then he says Ilaha, drawing out the sound as from his brain, and last Il Allah, repeated from his left side with great energy. This should be followed not mechanically like a ritual, in that way it will not help. Each of these stages is called a zarab, a constant hammering. Zarab refers to the state when something is recited forcefully with an exhaling effect and it creates a hammering sound on whatever spot it is focused on. You can, the best way to begin with is putting the force onto your navel or the solar plexus. When you are using the word Allah, the moment the Allah is repeated softly and who, when you do this sound, it hammers your solar plexus or the navel center. This is called zara. Therefore, zikr proceeds in two parts. Each zikr is carried on the inhaling and the exhaling sound. Inhaling sound, you are creating the sound Allah, and on exhaling sound, you are creating the sound Hu. The zarab happens with the exhaling sound. Both inhaling and exhaling are two phases of breath. Corresponding to this, the zikr proceeds in two phases. They are of course recited many hundreds 
of time over and the changes we have described accounts for the variations of the sounds and motion of the body described by the eastern travelers who have witnessed the performance of the zikr. The spiritual masters who are present as the majlis or the spiritual gatherings have basira or inner sight. They can behold their presence as well as the presence of others, men who are unseen. The Holy Prophet sometimes they go into the spiritual ecstasy as a result of which they either automatically stand up in reverential awe or they start shedding tears of joy on beholding him. One of the most important practice when you are hammering onto your solar plexus, if you do in a standing position, it has a greater effect. When you are sitting, your back tends to couch and then the exact force is not possible on to the solar plexus. And then when you are in a reverential position, you stand up. This is known as dance of celebration. And in dance of celebration, you can dance out of ecstasy. Some people who are new to this subject find it difficult to believe that Holy Prophet actually attend, attends the Zikr sessions. The Sheikh put them at ease. They tell them this is a matter of spiritual realities and that if they do not know about it yet, if Allah wills, they might come to know about it later. But they advise them not deny these spiritual realities because they only create confusion and discord in the seeker. Sometimes it is common practice among the sheikhs that the beloved prophet attends these zikr sessions and one of the fatha is it is also well known that the sheikhs who are elsewhere and who have passed away also attend the majlis of zikr hence there is a fatha for the presence of the ones who one's own sheikh as well. This Fatiha is recited as well. Al-Fatiha, Al-Hadrat is sheikh, Nafan Allahu Ihi Amin. It is that which impresses the heart by command of the Lord of Truth, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the moment of his choice with the perpetuity of everlasting evidence of inayat. This remembrance or zikr is permanent, persistent and enduring. No trace of forgetfulness impairs it and no heedlessness disturbs it for the feeling, instincts and thoughts are all involved in the 